My name is Kasha Hawthorne. I'm the Associate Director of Development and Graduate Relations at USC Law School. Thank you for coming uh, to our uh, event. Uh, this is something that we have uh, started uh, this year. Uh, we've been doing it in Beverly Hills every other month, kind of a lunchtime speaker series. Starting next year, we're going to be doing it every year, excuse me, every month in different locations. Uh, downtown LA, Beverly Hills, uh, Orange County, as well as we're going to try some in Pasadena and Woodland Hills area. Uh, the next event downtown will be January 16th, so please mark your calendars. And that will be at, actually at JAMS. They're offering a CLE event for Strictly USC Law and our supporters. Uh, and it will be, I believe it's four hours, and it's going to be free. And they're going to be offering credits on ethics, uh, substance abuse, and elimination of bias. So that's something to look forward to. The next downtown event will be um, in March. Uh, so thank you for coming. Uh, and I would like to introduce Jesse. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Jesse Freeman. I'm the moderator of this panel. <laughs> this is something we've been wanting to do for a long time. Lori helped uh, get this started and arranged, but something I've wanted to do ever since um, being in law school and also at Marshall for the MBA as well. I just think there's some really interesting perspectives out there about how we can network differently and increase our business opportunities. And so the panel um, today represents a really diverse group of persons um, with lots of experience either marketing in law firms, outside of law firms, lawyers, PR type people, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll hear some diverse opinions. Hopefully you hear some new information. If you hear anything repeated, that probably means it's important, so that's okay. Um, I have a bunch of questions lined up, but we're gonna start with the panelists sort of introducing themselves so you understand their background and perspectives. Some people have prepared short presentations. Then we'll get into questions that I've prepared. Please feel free to ask questions at any time. I do want to take questions from the audience as we go. Just raise your hand, and if I can get to you in a timely manner, we will. Otherwise, we'll do a dedicated Q&A at the end. So um, with that, why don't we start? Um, Kelly, why don't you introduce yourself first? OK. And uh, we'll work to Bill. And <laughs> my name is Kelly Hyon. My company is the K-Factor Enterprises. And I started my company because I saw there was a need for branding. And it's not just the branding of a product or a service, but a person as well. And in this day with technology and social media, it's, it's necessary to have your online profile match what you do or what you want to do in the future. So the K-Factor Enterprises, and I'm Kelly Meyer. My name is Bill Carnes. I'm a partner over at Chung Nove, Ralph Bennett, and Carnes. We do catastrophic personal injury cases. We represent the plaintiff, and we only work on contingency. And I'll tell you more when we do our little spiel. Oh, I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> no promise to tell you. I'm John Eno. I'm the managing partner of Reed Smith. Reed Smith is a global law firm. We have offices in 24 cities, about 70 men and lawyers worldwide. Talk a little bit more about that uh, in our sessions, but uh, really great to have everyone come out here. This is the first downtown LA uh, law school alumni event, so in fact, we have this many people. It's actually a real mm -hmm. success. So, so thanks for coming out. Hi, I'm Lisa Elgin. I'm the founder of Lisa PR, a marketing and public relations consulting firm for professionals and small businesses with a niche in attorneys. Um, the past number of years. I've worked uh, in-house for law firms doing marketing and public relations. Uh, our business is getting a new business. Um, why don't we go ahead and do you want to do your PowerPoint right now? Let's do that and then we will get into the panel. Sure. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs>
So people will, you know, identify you with, with that area when they have a need. Um, always bring your business cards with you. Does everyone here have their Three important social media categories. Social networks, you know about Facebook, LinkedIn, user generated content like YouTube where you upload your own videos, and blogs and microblogs. 57% of all internet users have joined a social network. And it's important to keep these sites uh, up to date and um, good lawyers get their best work by word of mouth. Always have, always will. What's different today is how the attorney's word of mouth reputation develops in the age of social media. Next, you really want to get your name out there. You want to be known as the expert in your field. Ways to do this, <coughs> write an article and get it published in a legal publication. Um, consider writing a blog. Lawyers publish blogs to enhance their reputation, be it personal or the firm. Demonstrate professional capacity and grow the firm's business <coughs> and their own practice. Here's examples of some top blogs from this year. You can try tweeting. That's an easy way to promote yourself or your firm. And LinkedIn. LinkedIn is great. I'll be talking about that in a second. But on LinkedIn, you want to join uh, LinkedIn groups and organizations and be an active participant in those groups um, so that same thing, people know who you are and what type of law you're practicing. Quick little tutorial. Um, create a profile. Make sure it's up to date. Um, this is your online reputation, so you want it to be top notch. Upload a professional photo. Connect with other professionals which is the same thing as friending on Facebook. Whenever you speak to a client, referral source, uh, prospect, or news person, get their email address and invite them to connect with you. Email at least 10 friends on LinkedIn for their, re for their recommendations, and in turn, write recommendations for your peers. Recommendations are really amazing when you're, when people don't know who you are, you know, you say, oh, take a look at my LinkedIn page, see what other people say about me instead of just what I say about myself. I think I have 15 or 16 on my LinkedIn page, um, and I'm always doing that. Join SE, um, Old School of Law, Bar Association, and other professional groups on LinkedIn and start a discussion. So by, by initiating a discussion, you're going to um, basically position yourself as a leader. Same thing, ask questions. Um, one thing not to do, try not to give your legal opinion, you don't, um, you don't want to get into any hot water with that. If for some reason it's Facebook, cool Facebook tutorial. Um, if your firm doesn't already have a page, you can create your own professional page. Again, keep it up to date, make sure your personal information is, is not really too big. I don't recommend that. If you have a personal page already, you can go ahead and create a separate professional page, but try not to have them. Um, or if you are starting your own practice, you can go ahead and create a business page, um, which should have your firm logo and a clever tagline, um, and then update it with news, success, that kind of thing. Upload uh, your photo. Add as many business contacts as you can. Uh, more likes equals more exposure. That's on the business page. The, the like is the thumbs up. And post frequently. Another thing is to make sure you understand your privacy settings. So do you want the public to have access to your profile or only your, your friends, your connections? Um, <coughs> some no-nos might seem obvious, but just in case. Yeah. Attorneys shouldn't friend judges. Good. Employers actually should not friend employees. Um, they can get in trouble for that. Do, do not negatively criticize your firm, another firm, your coworkers, opposing counsels. Bad idea. Don't post controversial opinions and basically just you know, use your common sense. Um, now, I want to.
want you to go create your game plan and fight, fight, <laughs> fight for your opponents. Thanks. <laughs> um, uh, feel free to email me. My email is just Lisa at lisapr.com if you have any additional questions. Okay. Lisa, before we move on to the next person, I had a question that asked a friend. <clears throat> talked a little bit about uh, having goals when you go out to meet people. What do you mean by that? Are you saying just don't go out to network in general, but, but have a plan, have a structure? What are you saying? Have a goal? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, two fold. One, if you know you're going to an event and there are certain high profile people that you want to meet, it's good to know. It's good to know ahead of time who's there, so you can research who's there. And go up to them and try to make that connection in person. Then later on you can connect with them on LinkedIn or through a connect it may be through a connection that you already have on LinkedIn and say, hey I met you. Um, also, you know, sometimes people go to events and they just kind of keep to themselves or they're a little shy. They're talking to people they already know and they don't break out and meet new people. Um, so it's it's good to Consider it like a job. Um, so that's what I'm Bill, why don't we jump down to you if you have anything prepared? I have a couple questions we can ask as well. I, I, I can just talk for, I'd like to maybe talk for about five minutes or something and then throw something at me because I won't keep track of how okay. long I'm talking for. Fire away. I'm going to sit right here. Let's make it more like AA. More communal. I'm 32 years old. I graduated law school when I was 25. I passed the bar at 25. And I had a problem. Uh, my goal, of course, is to make money. I mean, that's our goal. We are in this profession. I don't care. I mean, you can help people doing it. You can do all that kind of stuff. You do a lot of pro bono. I like it. One of my goals is to make money. I think that's a common goal that probably all of us share to some degree. Just want to be frank. I'm 25 years old. There's not a lawyer on earth that's going to send me a case. I look like I'm about 14 years old. I act like I'm about 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my problem. And what I did, and I'm telling you my story to, to the extent that it may help you out. And even if you're not as young, I mean, it's, it's never too late to start doing it. I mean, this is not really age specific. It's just more, this was my problem at that time. I learned that, you know, the way to do well and do well in business is just relationships. Everything happens because of relationships. I get 99% of my cases from other lawyers because of relationships. I think I'm good at what I do. There are plenty, I mean, there's Brian Panish, there's Tom Girardi's, I can be getting PI cases. But, you know, I get them from people. The reason is, is because of relationships. And that's really the whole name of the game, is creating and making these relationships. So how do you do that? I think relationships with lawyers are very important. Um, and that's where it really all comes in. The relationships you make in your law firm are, are important, but guess what? You guys are eating from the same cloth. So you have to get out there. Lisa made a really good point. Join an organization and get on their board. Here's a very good piece of advice if you're not a member of an organization, or if you are, and you're not on the board. I'm going to tell you to get on the board. You ready? This is a secret. <clears throat> uh, hi, I hear you're the president. Um, uh, my name is uh, Bill Carnes, and I'd really like to be on your board. I'm not telling you, 95% of the time, you're going to be on that board within three months or the next time someone comes out. I swear to God. I joined the Italian American Lawyers Association. I'm a quarter Italian. I was on their board in a month because I asked the president, can I be on the board? <laughs> I made sure that the bylaws said, you know, in terms of how Italian you need to be, forget about it. And then I was okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I think that's really what you gotta do. And when you go to these meetings, they suck, man. You know? Because it's just, they're dry, and oh my God, it takes forever. And I, I average about three events a week. December, forget about it. Every single night, I'm at a Christmas party or event, including weekends. Grant, I got no kids. 
I got no one, no one would ever in their right mind marry me. But I mean, so it's easier. But you can still do it with the family because I've seen people do it. But when you go to these events, people make a mistake. They work the room. That's BS. Don't work the room. Don't be the guy that goes to every single person and say, you know, here's my card, you know what I mean? Okay, and move on to the next one. And you're not making a relationship. You go. See somebody that you maybe kind of knew from law school, see, you know, someone that doesn't look like a total jerk, so hey, what's going on? And then chat with that guy or that girl. And then the next time you say, hey, you want to go out and grab a drink after this? And then you have a relationship. That's much better than having 50 cards, 50 of your cards in 50 separate pockets. Then, you, then you've got a friend, a work friend, and you build off of that kind of stuff. And I see all the time with young lawyers is that they, they get out and they do all the cards and then nothing ever happens, you know? And it's because they're doing too much at one time. Relationship building takes time. It's a personal relationship. You can't go there and, and think you're going to meet 25 people. Now, uh, you mentioned another good thing. Publish articles. I'll tell you another real secret, okay? You know LA, LA Lawyer Magazine? Who's published in that? Anybody published? I'll tell you how to get published. Call the publisher say, I'd like to publish an article. They're dying for people. I wrote an article on punitive damages. I had not gone to trial on a punitive damages case, and the article was about punitive damages and proving in the trial. Okay? I get calls to this day on punitive damages. The only time I've had punitive damages at trial was just a couple weeks ago, a judge knocked it down on directed, uh, uh, directed verdict. And rightfully so, according to the law, which I'm not very familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm not telling you to, you know, cheat, lie, steal, any of that kind of nonsense, but you know, you gotta get out there and do these kinds of things, and really the trick is, is just asking, and when you do it, you have to be a giver. You can't take from an organization. You have to give. You have to give your time. Currently, and I've added this up, my time in terms of being a lawyer is about, in terms of work, the overall picture, probably is somewhere around 60%. The other part of my time is I'm, you know, I'm lobbying, so we all have business. I go to Sacramento all the time I, uh, to lobby. I'm involved in the CALA down here, CAOC, government relations. I'm doing phone banks. This is an election year, so it's a little different. But when you get involved with these organizations, you gotta, you got to give your time to help them succeed. And when you do that, then you really start getting known in these organizations. And then people start liking you, respecting you. And then you get higher up. I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm on the board of CALA, uh, the Consumer Attorney Association of Los Angeles, one of the youngest board members ever. Why? Because I showed up and kept, kept on showing up. Board of Director of CAOC. Why? Same reason. And because of that, and it's so weird, people think you're a better lawyer than you are. They do. They do. Oh, he's on the board. It gives you credibility. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, they, they think I'm better. Now, as it turns out, in those types of organizations, a lot of it is educational. So in terms of being a better lawyer, so you do more of those programs and stuff. It does make you better. But I get a lot more credit than I deserve. Frightening more credit than I deserve. Um, so those are the kind of, if I were to take, if, if you were to take anything from what I said, you gotta just you you gotta join organizations, your practice organizations, if you're in Beverly Hills, the Beverly Hills Bar Association, the LACPA, and then get involved with the actual committees. If if everyone's has an ethnicity, I guarantee you there's an ethnic bar association associated with your ethnicity. What what are you? Scottish. Perfect. Irish, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> are you a member of the Irish American Bar Association? <laughs> Oh, really? No, we have pressed for centuries. No, it's, it's, <laughs> don't worry about it. They have their meetings in L.A. <laughs> um, any kind of ethnic bar, those are great. Uh, practice area bars, if you're a PI lawyer, the Cala Consumer Attorneys. If you're a defense lawyer, Southern California Defense Council. And, uh, and then the, more, the local bar associations, Beverly Hills Bar, Pasadena Bar, 
um, there's not a downtown one for shoot, um, and things like that. That that's all. I, I don't want to. I could keep on talking about this stuff for hours, uh, but um, you know, you know, it gets boring. Bill, let me ask you. A and by the way, Jesse, if I lose this trial and I talk to a juror, and the juror says. Um, well, we didn't like you because you had to leave early. Even though I told the judge, judge, can you please tell the jury that we're leaving early, early because the court has an issue rather than me? And he said, okay, and still threw me under the bus in front of the jury. I'm going to call him the fine you, Jesse. Understood. Um, you sort of touched on this, uh, but let me ask it specifically so you can address yeah. it. What, what are mistakes that you commonly see people make when they're trying to? I think you touched on it a little, but let's get that specifically. Well, what do people do that's wrong, and how do you fix that? Mistakes that I see. Yeah. I see people talk about themselves. Never talk about yourself when you network with someone. Ask them questions. What do you do? What's going on in your practice? It's like dating. It's like dating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that in oh, this is going to change everything. That's your new online presence, right? Dave, that's uh, I can help with your profile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you picture from picture of the back of my head. My good side, right? So ask ask questions. Yeah, Find you out about ask questions. You can't talk about yourself. No one likes ever same thing with job interviews, everyone's heard that, you know, just ask questions about the firm, the person that's, you know, doing your interview, you leave, he doesn't know anything about you, he or she, you think, oh yeah, the interview went great, I like that guy, you know, they ended up talking about themselves. Um, uh, another thing is, you know, you, you, you buy out more than you can chew, which is what I was talking about earlier, you go to too many people, and that doesn't make sense, and you don't come back, you know, it, it, there's not a, uh, what do they call it? Diminishing returns? That that doesn't happen in, in network. You keep on going the same stuff, it gets better and better. The more you go, it gets better and better. And look, guys, it's hard. Also, you want to stay in their minds. The people yeah. that you need. Mm -hmm. If it's your newsletter, if it's however it is, you want them to remember you. But let me tell you something. It is hard. It is a pain in the ass. That part of my language, I'm so sorry, but it really truly is. <laughs> it's so boring sometimes, and night after night, and I work in Century City, I drive downtown all the time, you know, stupid traffic. Yeah. And I'm all over the state now doing this stuff. And um, is it rewarding? Is it fun to an extent? Yeah, because you get to know people more and they become your buddies, but it, it's difficult. It takes a lot of time. I'm sorry, that's just the way it goes. Yeah. Um, you kind of touched on follow-up in terms of the next time that you meet the person face-to-face. -face. Yeah. Is that your preferred way of following up with them? Oh. Or, or do you use that internet or phone uh, call? I don't really send emails. Personal notes are the best. Handwritten, handwritten notes. notes. I love getting the handwritten notes. Love it. You know, I don't do that very much, though, myself. Um, I do do handwritten notes, but give me some organization. Hey, you know, hey, you coming here next month? Yeah, yeah, okay. Right, I'll see you. Um, and then next time around, hey, God, you need to get out of here. So I'll buy. I've bought hundreds of thousands of dollars of drinks in the past year. I kid you not. I mean, if, if, oh, if Seagram's got my, my credit card bill or something like that, they'd give me an honorary award or something, put me on the board. The IRS has you, Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? I've probably gone over my time. All right, thanks, Bill. Um, that was good. Kelly, why, why don't I ask you this question and also go into your prepared remarks, but, but for you, what is, what is networking? You work with clients that are, that are lawyers and presumably also a lot of non-lawyers. So what is, what is networking and business development for the types of business professionals that you work with? And how might that be the same or different than, than how lawyers network and do business development? You know, they both touched on really important facts and relationship building is key. If you're not, if you're a shy sort of a person and it's not easy for you to go up to somebody at a networking event, get somebody to introduce you. And retaining clientele has happened in relationship building. And then the referrals happen in relationship building. So 
being able to network and build your business is first done with you and your presence, and whether it's your online presence or whether, whether it's the way you present yourself at a networking event is truly the key. It's getting out there, making yourself visible. You know, I'll bet you most of the people in this room can think of 10 to 20 people, and I know when you graduate everyone says, you know, contact 10 to 20 people, let them know what you're doing, sending out a form letter, letting everybody know, or Christmas time, being able to send out that cute Christmas card sitting on top of a pumpkin or next to a tree or whatever it is, being able to encourage those to respond to you. And it doesn't matter which industry you're in. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, John, I think you're ready, so let's do a presentation and then I'll get back to my questions when we're done. All right. Actually, you probably have a handout here as well if you wanted to follow along or can't read the PowerPoint. Um, and thank you to Paul Hastings for supplying the PowerPoint. I know the projector that's definitely great. Uh, a quick commercial about Reed Smith, I said in the beginning, but uh, we're a global firm with uh, offices in 24, 23, 24 cities now uh, that are just open in Singapore. Uh, here in Southern California, about 120 lawyers, a uh, number of practices, and we started here in 2003 when we worked with Crosby Keaton. This is a page that I like to talk about, though, all the kind of accolades and awards, but two in, in particular that I'm really proud of. Uh, we received for the second year in a row one of three law firms uh, in, the, in the country that received a gold certification in terms of empowerment of women. Uh, we had, and this is measured uh, objectively by compensation, percentage of equity partners, percentage of people in management. So very, uh, very proud of that. Here in Southern California, 30% of our partners are women, and 70% of our non-partner attorneys are women. Uh, similarly, in the area of uh, diversity, uh, we just got the, uh, one of the finalists for the Thomas L. Sager Award uh, for commitment to diversity. 25% of our partners here in Southern California are minorities, and 50% are Obviously, I have some work to do in both cases, but I'm uh, very proud of it. Um, I thought I'd start off just by talking a little bit about how Reed Smith approaches uh, business development. And you know, I was, I've been in a couple of firms now, and it's unique about Reed Smith, at least maybe Greg's interested to hear how you your perspective comes to you. But not only are uh, people evaluated on their legal skills and accomplishments, but on, on all matters about being a lawyer. So this is what we call a competency wheel. And not only is it just research analysis, practice skills, client relationships, and business development, that's a key, key portion of uh, how people are evaluated. So really starting from the culture of this is an important part of how you right, can become a good citizen of the firm. What I thought I'd do is just give a quick top ten, and it's not like the David Letterman uh, <laughs> top ten, I'm not going to throw anything out the window or anything like that. Uh, and it's not necessarily the best top ten, it's just ten random thoughts uh, that I have. First is to take control of your career. Now, whether you're a young lawyer or even a, a Dave Wilson and I went to law school together, and so uh, what we I guess we call people mid-career. Well, I see Billy here. And great to have you here as well. And so maybe I don't know what you would say the later stages of your career. But no matter what stage you are, you're going to learn to take control of your career. And you know, from my perspective, uh, when I was uh, an associate, um, the first areas that I started doing a lot of work with was savings and loan regulations. And you know, it was going to be clear that I was going to start down this path of becoming a savings and loan regulatory lawyer, which is not all bad, but it was something I didn't want to do. And you know savings and loans didn't have a long life either. Um, and so, you know, quickly understand you've got to take control of your own career. You in particular particular you I have big firms. And it's so easy to get molded by the firm and pushed in the direction that the firm wants you to go. But you have to all say same time they ask, is this what I really want to do? At the same time, I had been wanting to do more in the community, more in terms of business development, more be more like Bill. And the firm actually told me, John, we want you to spend 2,400 hours billing hours. If you bring a hundred thousand dollar client, you know, that doesn't matter to us. We really don't need you to be billing hours. That didn't sit well with me. And so ultimately saying, look, if I'm going to take control of my career and I really want to be a business developer, I want to make sure I have my own clients. What am I going to do about it? So taking control, control of the career no matter what stage uh, you're at. Uh, later in my career, I was a, in a small firm where it was what you call e what you feel. And if you didn't bring in a client and you weren't going to be able to pay the rent or pay the mortgage, that certainly makes sure you can take control of the career. So 
along the same lines, it's really understanding your, your strengths and, uh, and identifying your weaknesses. And I think everyone's going to hit on this as well. Now, a while back at our firm, we thought we'd do this business development training for everyone and learn how to do the rubber chicken circuit, but it's really not, not for everyone. Okay? And you're good at certain things and you become better at, at certain things as well. So you have to really understand, are you a great salesperson or are you a person that can learn how to do things better? Know your weaknesses and work on your weaknesses. Um, 15, 10, 15 years ago, I knew that I wasn't uh, as comfortable speaking publicly, so I went on and took a public speaking class. Whether it's Toastmasters or all the rest, you certainly can do that. And a number of my colleagues, they've gotten personal coaches just helping develop your career. So to the extent you have weaknesses, address them, identify them, and do something about them. Um, I think we heard this next one, push beyond your comfort zone. Whether that's at a cocktail party, you know, getting up and uh, talking to someone. How often do we see at our these events that people just cluster, right? And then you just get on the same little group of the same people you work with, you never talk to anyone. But it's just not just in terms of a social event. Uh, do things that push the envelope of what you're comfortable with. And whether it's you know speaking in front of a thousand people, which was a, a fear for me at some point, and uh, do it enough times, you get you get over it or just going up and saying, shaking the hand of a CEO, a very big client, it's something that is something that uh, will take you outside your comfort zone. Um, this is probably something Lisa had, had as well, so this is showing the wisdom, Jesse, that uh, that's repeated, maybe it's, it's, it could be good advice, but take time to write a business plan. Uh, whether it's annually or not, so our firm requires people to write a plan and have identified goals, and not just saying, I don't want to bring in another million dollars of business this year. Let's say quantifiable, identifiable goals that you can measure. I want to meet this client. I want to do more with this particular individual. Just specific goals that you can measure uh, yourself against. Uh, number five, uh, develop your elevator pitch. And this is the 30 second pitch about what you do. Uh, we have a training session that we have with some of our associates. And I was sitting with one of our um, labor employment associates and they said, okay, tell me what you do. And the answer was, well, you know, I, I work on trials, I work on motions, uh, I assist with uh, um, and taking depositions. And I said, well, the problem is, if you're trying to t talk about winning business or, or telling clients about what you can do, it's not, that's not what you do for them. You want to say, how can you help them? So it's us change the way your, your pitch is and say instead, or your, your elevator, you can say, well, I work with clients. They work with clients that have employees, they have issues with respect to termination, firing, hiring, and they help them through that process. Sometimes they get sued, and we help them in that process as well. So put in the perspective, I think that's what Bill was saying. Instead of talking about yourself, what you do, how you can help uh, that particular person. Uh, number six is uh, never miss an opportunity to promote your brand or yourself. And this is uh, actually comes from uh, one of our clients, Coca-Cola. House Council Coca-Cola spoke at one of our uh, retreats. We got up to the stage and we took up this can like this and we put it right there. We got around just talking about, you know, did you notice I actually did that? Because, because that's an opportunity to promote your brand. You never miss an opportunity to, to, to promote yourself or promote your brand. And whether it's at a holiday party that's just for your spouse or something like that, there's always those opportunities and you never know where it's going to lead. And as Bill said, uh, you know, it takes a long time and a lot of uh, degrees of separation, but in terms of where that business comes from, you never know. You never know what contacts uh, they will get. Uh, FaceTime. Uh, this is especially for people in the big firms. It's so easy to just hold up in your office, right? Just hold in your office and you're just doing your emails and you ask the question about, uh, you know, following it by email. Now that's one way, okay? But certainly, Facebook even, you know, not just email communications, because how many people actually focus on that, right? It's the FaceTime, and that's what we're talking about relationships, that's what we're talking about getting out, just spending time in front of people. That's what's so important. Uh, creating a follow-up system, number eight. Uh, as Bill said, you know, look, you're gonna get a ton of business cards, you're gonna get a ton of leads, you know what do you do with them, right? And so, there's, there's software on this, there's client, uh, Customer relationship software that you can uh, obtain, maybe your firm has it, or just a plain old Excel spreadsheet or, or Word document. Just 
keep track of where you are. Prioritize your leads. You know, you're going to get a stack of business cards like this, okay? And uh, you know, some of them may be good, some of them may be bad. Some of you throw them in the trash, and some of them say, "Look, I want to really follow up with that one." After you follow up, say, "What's the next steps?" So just create a system, and it's only that systematic. You know, every every time you take a look at it, maybe take a look at it once a week. Just following up because don't let it be three, six months. Oh, you know, I was going to follow up with that person. And by that time, the, the relationship's cold, the lead's cold, and you know, really not really know where to go with that. Um, I think Bill actually picked up on this one. Is yeah, give, don't on that one. No, no, no. I think maybe we have to talk about it on the, on the, on the call before, so I stole your idea. Uh, but give, don't beg. I mean, it, when I talk to uh, people and prospective clients or even clients, Always trying to introduce uh, them to something, okay? and uh, you know, I'm a deal lawyer, and so a lot of deal lawyers get their best work from introducing people to one another. And so, as opposed to saying, "Hey, give me some work," it's, "Hey, let me introduce you to this person, this person, this person that might be helpful to your business." And to the extent you do that, they'll remember you. Again, give and, and that better. And finally, I think this is someone said it as well. Uh, just remember to ask. Okay. When, you, when you meet with someone, say, you know what, I'd really appreciate the opportunity to work with you in the future. Please call me if you have anything. I'd love to follow up with you. I'd love to serve on your board. Uh, whatever the, uh, the opportunity is, because we just, maybe we're just shy by nature, and so just taking that extra step before you leave, remember that. So that's quick in a nutshell. Um, here's my opportunity to promote my brand and myself. So uh, if you have any uh, uh, questions, I'm happy to uh, speak again or whatever opportunity you have. Thanks, John. Both, I heard both you and Lisa talked about goals and plans. You said you had a requirement for a lot of you, for your associates, that have this business plan. I'm going to throw this question out to basically everyone on the panel one at a time, but what's on your plan for, for 2013, or what was on your plan for 2012 in terms of business development? John, why don't you go first? Sure. Well, a number uh, for me, and we had a big initiative for our Japan practice. And I agreed at the beginning of the year to launch that. And so uh, it was a big part to organize people throughout the firm, whether they were in London or in Asia, uh, here in California, with that launch. But in terms of that particular practice area, you know, we came up with a list of 20 or so uh, potential targets and how we were going to go through each one of them and what the, and what the next steps were going to be. So you know, identifiable. I mean, it's great to say we're going to represent every single one of you know, these companies, but we see progress. Of, uh, none of the other areas, I would say probably most of us, not all of us, we all have so many balls in the air. Okay? There's just so many leads that are, that are going on, so you know, keeping track of all that is prioritizing that as well. I uh, If I was to tell you what my goals were at the beginning of this year, you'd probably laugh because everything that I thought was going to happen didn't. But everything that has happened has been such a welcome blessing this year. We have been able to, in my, in my business, take everything from opera singers to NFL players to uh, women's ministries all the way to dentists. And we've been able to see people live their passion. And that's really what I, I thrive on, is I want you to be better than, I ever, than you ever thought possible. And that's my tagline. And so, Going into 2013 with all the balls in the air, as you just said, it is, it is my goal to take each client that stays with us or that goes on a maintenance plan and to see them thrive. So that's my goal, and it has to do with everybody else. Uh, yeah. my, my goals are, are case specific. I have... Uh, uh, really been lucky this year in developing relationships with younger PI lawyers that do a lot of advertising. And um, I've been able to get in with them through taking some real dogs to try. I mean real dogs. Drunk lady falls off the karaoke stage, that dogs. Um, not a good case, by the way, according to the Van Nuys jury. I agree with them. Um, I've got about <laughs> been able to get associated in about 20 to 25 cases in litigation. My goals in 2003 on real good cases. Um, are, my goal is to wrap them up. And um, it's cost me a fortune to do so, but I hope uh, that that's what happens. And 
time of the year and wrap them up for a lot of money. So in terms of business and things like that, in terms of what I do, those are my goals. I mean, you know, good results on cases. In terms of building relationships, you get good results on cases. Those guys can send you their good stuff over and over and over. Um, you mentioned that some of my goals are doing more speaking engagements and um, writing articles. And also, like Kelly, um, I want my clients to um, you know, have great success and, and you know, be somewhat famous in uh, what they do. Uh, recently, I wrote a press release for a anti-counterfeiting um, coding company. And we released it through PR Web, and PR Web wrote back that it was one of like, the most successful press releases from an unknown company, that all these sites picked it up. So that was, um, that made me feel really good for, for this uh, startup company. I have to run back. I can't keep the jury ready. I'm so sorry. Well, they'd understand. No, they Look will. where you are. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. I gotta run. I apologize. Okay. Um, so, John, you work for a big firm. You've worked for big firms for many, many years. I think some people in the room also work for big firms. Can you talk a little bit about? We've talked about networks and business development externally. Can you talk a little bit about? networking yourself internally, if you're either in a law firm or if you're a lawyer who works for a company, how do you market yourself within your organization and why is that important? Yeah, it's a combination of everything you know, we've all talked about, but uh, uh, you have to become, spend space time. You know, space time is something of that, whether it's at various meetings, uh, retreats and all the rest is really to uh, make yourself known uh, that way. Having an area that you can say you know very well, you've done very well in a particular case, a particular matter, uh, have that uh, publicized or figure out how to make that publicized. You know, in our firm, we have a number of group meetings, group video conferences, and being able to get people up and talking about talking in front of you know, other offices or in the like, whether it's video or you know, separate meetings. That's how you kind of have to get a name for yourself. The obvious thing is you've got to do great work. And if you do great work, then people will talk about what a great person that person is. But it's just, it just doesn't always it just translate. It just doesn't always permeate. Uh, so you have to continue to figure out a way to um, advertise it. In our firm, we have the internet. So every morning or every hour or whatever, a minute, when you pop up the image of the screen, you'll see the stories that are going on. And you'll always see a picture of somebody or a group of people to a client and they just achieve this great win in this type of case or they just close this deal in this kind of matter. And so that's how people start getting their name associated with a particular area of expertise or a particular geography. Um, and so forth, as I said, young, young associates, um, you know, right now you may get pulled up in your office. And so how do you get exposure beyond your group? How do you get exposure beyond your office? And how do you uh, get a name for yourself? It's in the struggle but also continue to push to say, I want to make sure that people know who I am. And if you find that you're going to lunch every day, you know, eating lunch at your desk every day, uh, you're not meeting people, that's you know, probably the best way, best way to get to know people is to never waste a, a lunch on yourself. You know, always find a time to interact with somebody uh, because it's whether it's someone outside of town or whether it's really to make them spend time. Um, I'd like to circle back, if we can, talk a little bit more about social media. And I'll put out the opinion that I've sort of held for a little while, because I haven't done a lot of professional Facebooking or LinkedIn networking. So I, I imagine some people might think, oh, that seems a little cheesy. It's not that useful. Um, maybe for Lisa or Kelly or both of you, how do you make what you're presenting in the digital world relevant, how do you publish articles, I think you talked about, that are interesting and important to potential clients or people that you're networking with. So in other words, how do you take it from just having an online presence into making it a powerful, useful online presence 
and then what are those uh, images or information that you put out there? Why, why does that matter? What does that look like? One of the things, I get up every morning and I add them right now, probably 22 Facebook fan pages. And every single one of my clients is different. And the goal, the goal every morning is to make sure, because the account settings that I have, the security settings, as Lisa was talking about in the beginning, I don't let anybody post on somebody else's business fan page until the client has posted themselves. So nobody can go in. People can respond, but you have to really watch that and monitor it because you never know when there's going to be bad publicity put out there. And the way that it's working now, the way that Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, YouTube, things are changing so quick. And I'm part of the beta team for most of those. So that means that I get information two months prior to the public. So when I get up and I look at 20 pages, I make sure that the logos are still consistent with the website, which is consistent with the business card, which is consistent with the brochure. I make sure that the relevant information, and if I've had to do press releases because I'm a member of PR Newswire, that I take the link and I find the right one, the immediate link and not some subsidiary link, and I add that to that page. Now, Facebook feeds into Twitter if you want it to. And it used to be that you could also link it to LinkedIn, but you can't do that. So you have to go through then and make sure that you post it wherever your social media is. So Google+, YouTube, if it, you know, if it warrants, and then also on LinkedIn. And so that's the way I spend my morning. But it's, it is so important for people to realize if the color changes in your firm, if you add Japan to your firm, you have to go through all of your social media and make sure it's consistent across the board. Consistency is key. What's the message you want out there? And then um, making sure that you don't get too caught up in what everybody else is doing. So just stay focused on your goal short and long term. write an article and you get it published, I'm sure you get um, you know, a link to that article. Then you know you, you post it on your LinkedIn, like here's an article I wrote, whatever, and then put the link. You post it on your Facebook, you post it on your Twitter, you know, so you, you want to you want to take the the amount of time you spend on something and really use it for all of the work. Um, so people know what you you've done. You get your name out there and your, your work out there. Um, well, I was interested in asking about how do you how do you know what sort of information that you're publishing is relevant. Some people in here might be thinking, oh that's really good ideas, I'll put something out there. Now what do I focus on? Is it very practice specific to what you're, you're working on? Yeah. Or are there things that are more likely to get published than not published? On your on your LinkedIn or your as as you're putting stuff out into the digital world, not stuff that yeah. you have control over, but getting actually published. Oh, not that you're supposed to be getting published. Yeah. yeah. So a good tip. Um, I think it was, it was Bill that was speaking about getting published. Is contact you know California lawyer and ask them what types of articles they're looking for, or you can look at their editorial calendar and you know if if you're an IP for example, and there's, you know, you see in August they're going to be writing something about patent law, then, you know, that's a good month to target to try to get published in. Um, so basically, also before you go through all the trouble of writing something, that's one way you can, you can run it, you can contact the magazine or the newspaper with your idea. It should be, you know, somewhat newsworthy, cutting edge kind of thing with your idea and say, hey, if I write an article about this, is it likely to get published? And then they usually have guidelines, you know, so so many words, so long, that kind of a thing. Yes. Sorry. Related is the opportunities, uh, speaking engagements. Um, you know, PLI, Mormon, um, so many different opportunities, and they also look for uh, good speakers and from uh, you know, my past, uh, having spoken on, for example, Securities Law, Securities Institute, uh, 
have had potential clients then say, well, you actually must be pretty good because you were a speaker at that conference. And so it's just, you know, as I said earlier, it lends credibility. So I know it's a lot of work sometimes to have to go you know, to post the attic, but it actually pays off you know, down the road. You don't immediately get some of those contacts. And I think it also uh, gives you some name recognition, like right? you're familiar with the name. Once you start speaking places or writing articles, people remember your name. They remember who you are, and they're like, "Oh, you know, I'm going to refer this to so and so." So, on that, and on both of their notes, I mean, some of you are looking like, "Well, why is Kelly here?" Because she's, you know, not directly involved in the law firm. But it's to reiterate the importance of who you are. So, if you want to be part of a board, as Bill had said, or you want to write an article call up and tell them that because once your name is put with that article and it brings credibility to the fact that you could be a good speaker and put it out there to the person you've written the article for because they are always looking for people and capitalize on your name don't be shy about putting it on your profiles either i'm going to be speaking at or i just wrote an article on and get excited about who you are i was brought in as an outside consultant for a law firm a boutique law firm in newport beach and i was brought in specifically two reasons one, to brand him, the owner of the law firm, and then secondly, not first, but secondly, to brand the law firm. And in doing, in branding him as an individual, he gave me a list of all of his goals. We sat down and we had a three-hour conversation. What is it you want? What, it, what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want to leave for your kids? Well, I want my name on a building at USC. <laughs> and, I <looked> at him, <laughs> and I'm like, well, that works. How much money do you have? We can, do, we can get that done for you quick. But all I had to do is call up across the country for all law publications. I got him in so many publications, and then when it came to speaking engagements, everybody wants a speaker because a lot of people are really shy. And a lot of people need, you know, they, they break out of the comfort zone of standing up in front of 10 people, thousands of people, and all of a sudden they find their glory and they have something to say. So put your name to it and don't be shy. That's right. We have about 15 more minutes. Let's take some questions. I have a lot more on here, but I'd like to take some questions from the audience if anybody has anything they're dying to ask. Um, I'm, a, I'm a partner at Woodsmith, Henning & Berman. We're mid-sized firms. We're not big or small. We've got 125 lawyers uh, in the region. And uh, with client development marketing, uh, as someone who's been practicing for 16 years, uh, I'm in a different position than some of younger folks here, but it's interesting because I have done a lot of what you talked about, about having a name and having a reputation, and, and a lot of it does take time, but you have to develop an expertise. You can't just walk out and say, I'm at a law school, I went to USC, and I'm wonderful, and I'm brilliant, and you should hire me because I did, because we all know that, you know, some of what we do as lawyers requires experience. Um, but as you're building that, I think one of the questions and the struggles that I run into is making that translation from having the reputation, the presence, to the clients then actually calling you or getting that person to refer you, either because, well, you've got an extra reputation and then you must have business. You don't need more business, kind of that stuff. And I don't know if you have ideas of, of how to make that translation or make that job from when you have the, the presence, to you have the articles, you have those things. Do you do client surveys, like when you send out your bills? We do. So. But it's the interesting like, thing do is you have any suggestions for ways we could serve you better, that mm -hmm. kind of thing? Mm -hmm. that. Not a lot to respond. Don't respond. Not to. And then uh, one thing I mentioned was um, for your top referral sources, even at different tiers of top and mid, <laughs> um, sending them, you know, like a little gift or something around holiday time, mm -hmm. instead of just a generic card, but something where you actually and write a thank you note. Um, um, that goes a long way. In saying that, we ran across, and I'm going to give this out to you, it's called Wonderland Bakery, and I was so amazed at what they do for clients. They will take a JPEG picture, and they will put it on a cookie. It could be the logo of a law firm. It could be a judge's face. It could be anything. <laughs> they will make the basket for you. They'll put it on the outside of a tin, which is a keepsake, which you would put your logo on, right? But it was a wonderful idea to say thank you so much for allowing me 
me to have the time with you. It was just, and they're located in Newport. I would say uh, you just have to be persistent, and obviously you know, it comes with time. Um, I remember meeting somebody who met, met a big firm, and he said, you know, our firm's method of business development, the advice that uh, they gave us, hang around the uh, oldest and the sickest partner. And, uh, wait for that person to uh, pass on the business. Um, <laughs> that's one way to do it. But, uh, 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 no, you just have to, you know, spend the time and continue to use all the I, you know, I, you said in terms of, you know, um, having having the work. It's that I find that the people that are the busiest are the ones that actually are able to attract the most new work. Because you're able to say, well, I'm working with this firm, this or I have to this, I have this, we're working on this. And then people are just, they want to go with a winner. They want to go with yeah. someone that's doing a lot. And so that just eats on itself. So kind of the more you're doing and the busier you are, actually, you know, it creates more work on the more work on the And in saying that, 75% of my business is built on referrals. Now you figure with all the balls in the air, and one of them may drop, or I may drop one of them intentionally because you have to spend your time wisely. It's been said that there's only 24 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. And in saying that, you have to think that every person that you talk to could be a referral source, correct? So you want to keep in touch with them, and we've, you know, we've alluded to that several times today. The other part is when it comes to, you know, sometimes the word translation or transition. If you're gonna be transitioning, you're 16 years in, and I don't know, I don't know where you want to go next. And I would really look at that. And is I tell people from a psychology aspect, you have to be around the people that are already where you want to be. That's how you get to where you want to go next. That's a goal setting. And so, depending on where you are in the stages of your career or in your life, or what becomes more important on one day may not be important on the next day. It's being around those that are already in the place or know those things that you want to know, being around them. And I, and I said it earlier, and I don't know if this is no fun killing Lisa, but uh, you know, it's a, around that time in my career, I, I hired a coach, a career coach that this is kind of a personal trainer, someone that uh, is going to make sure you're working in. So when you got to go to a meeting the next month, say, well, what did you do? Did you do what we talked about? Oh, yes, you, 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 did, you did. And so and that's what. And so are great resources, whether it's them or someone that someone else you know. It just forces you to you know, do take that extra step uh, each month or however often you need. Or even in your law firm, if there's a mentor for you, mm -hmm. just suck them dry like a leech. Because <laughs> 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 there's so much really good business development, mm -hmm. shadow them a little, spend some time with them, see what, see what it is that they're doing. No questions from the audience? Question about um, young associates and how they might build build clientele because I think there's this split in people who are just starting out where the people they know are people like themselves. You know, they they're just entering the workforce. They don't have a lot of power. They're not going to be keeping more bringing in business. And at the same time, in a large firm structure, you're not having a lot of personal interaction with clients. That's the big big dogs that are that are interacting with them and who are building the relationships they've already established with those clients. Do you, any of you have advice for young associates? Um, again, we talked about this earlier, but join boards. Like, go out and find something, uh, you know, like, uh, like LACA, or join the board of something. Uh, join a, a nonprofit. That way, people start to get to know you and eventually will refer business to you. And then also, if you have extra time, you know, write articles. Start to start to develop credibility that way. In full disclosure, Kristen's with Lee Smith, um, and uh, she's actually she's great. And I talked about getting FaceTime, and so she's volunteered for a number of projects, volunteered for committees, and uh, really getting FaceTime out there. And what I, what I'd say is that. Uh, you know, you're going to start having more interactions with clients. That might not be the general counsel, but it might be someone in the business side, it might be someone in you know, the level, kind of a your know, level. And you develop a relationship with those people because, you know, in 10 years that person may be the general counsel, the deputy general counsel, or may go to another company, very likely may go to another company, 
which also deal with the status of relationship. And so many times, being a dealer or being a trial lawyer, and when the matter's over, you don't talk to that person anymore, you get to stay in touch with those, these people. And you know, I've actually always keep in touch with people on the other side, because they end up becoming nice referral sources. So somehow, you know, continue to keep up those relationships, because it's, it pays off. It's just not you know, only within the work company. It takes someone out to lunch. They've been out to a, you know, a concert or whatever you people like to do, um, and start developing that relationship with people. You just you never know where they're going to go. Another place is just obviously for you know, the relationship you have with your people you started. With. So Kristen's first, first first year class, those people end up at different places. They end up at different firms. They go work with clients. They go work with other people. And you know, how many of our clients are actually former colleagues that are now at some some, some company? I'm a big fan of stepping out of the box and extending your comfort zone. So being that everybody being that you've heard all about the law, there's another passion you have inside of you. So if your passion is donating your time to the Boys and Girls Club of America, or if it's uh, tapping into your family network, or those extended cousins that you haven't seen that you're going to see during the holidays, and, and you know, the, the immediate gratification or the immediate necessity of being at the firm and talking to your classmates Groups are so important, and it could be a group that's not even relevant to law. It's just letting people know that you have this experience, because you do have experience. You have this experience, and you want to share it. And it doesn't matter if it's a, a nonprofit. It doesn't matter if it's with family. But the more people you talk to, the more you get out there, the more exposure you have in and out of the law firm. We're running a little low on time, but we can't skip this question. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with you, John. Um, we, a lot of us in the room are Trojans. How do we use the Trojan network? Oh, fantastic. And for people who haven't met Tasha and Lori, um, great resources for the online uh, association. And uh, you know, it's, it's great thing. Presumably, all, everyone has, has some connection to USC or, or, or aspires to have connections to USC. That's what I was asking to uh, comment in terms of you know, what I, I love going to USC football games, and I find other you know, people who do as well, and so then the next thing you know, I get involved with the Alumni Association, now I'm with the Board of Governors, and uh, the Asian American Alumni Association, so uh, we all love USC, and so it's something that's uh, it's a lot of fun, fun to do. But yeah, it was, um, I was at the gym, and I was overhearing some, some people talk. This was one guy, he's put a recent grad, I think he did some uh, um, HR systems uh, in toxic companies, and he's talking to a recent grad, and he goes, you know, USC is just so great because you know, people really do help out. People really do want to try to find opportunities to work together. And you're going to find this in your career. And, you know, there's another school across town, and they're, they're okay. Uh, they're in a good school, more or less. But they just don't have the same alumni network, or at least the bond that it seems that we have. And so, you know, take advantage of it. And if there's one thing, you know, you say, well, hey, how about the game last week? You know, what do you think of us? How are we going to play against Oregon this week? It just gives you that bond. And so from me, I said, I'll say, get involved, plug for uh, for, for Lori and Tasha. Get involved with, with the law school alumni association. Get to know people that way. Uh, get involved with the, with the alumni association. There's just so many opportunities to do it. I mean, that's not your biggest passion, but it's, uh, it's something that, you know, for me, it certainly grew up, grew on me. And uh, it's something that there were a lot of people here. Yeah. Some of the questions, please. I just wanted to share a story for a second from the things that you've said. I was at USC and sang a cappella while I was there in California. And um, that's been my passion, do what I cappella, that kind of thing. Um, and after the bar exam, I had some spare time. So I started looking on the internet for groups that are looking for singers. Um, and I came across an organization called the Do What Ball of Fame. Um, called them up about singing. It turns out they're forming a non-profit organization. I attend, uh, you know, I hang out with the various people involved. Literally, the next thing I know by accident, they're telling me, oh, we have a board meeting, and you're on the board of this organization. I had no idea that I was, you know. And, and it, things have just snowballed from there, you know, with so many contacts. And, you know, I was just at an inductee, you know, induction meeting the other day where we inducted Wally Roker. I don't know if you know Wally Roker and the Heartbeat, very famous group from the, the 50s. Um, and I find myself sitting, you know, in this meeting when they're inducting this person into the 
Hall of Fame, and I'm just like, I don't know what I'm doing there. So it's amazing how these things kind of come together by accident. Yeah, for a comment, uh, just a suggestion. If we have time, we need to go on the room if people don't have to rush to work. It's fine with me. So, I have the opportunity in some mm -hmm. far away. Well, I guess I've condemned myself to the Irish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, Bruce Ridley. I'm at uh, Kane Balmer Bergman, uh, more or less across the street, and I'm a trial lawyer uh, with, with hopefully a future ahead of me. <laughs> um, my name is Kristen Chadwick. Uh, John already outed me. I'm an attorney at Reed Smith. I'm in the litigation department. Um, just starting out. Yeah, my name is Mike Reynolds. Uh, I work at O'Melveny and Myers. I'm an associate uh, my third year. So, uh, also doing litigation. Um, yeah, um, my name is Erin McCann. I went to, I was in Mike's class. Um, I'm a family law attorney in Pasadena. Uh, my name is Arthur Bahadi. I'm a recent graduate of the LLM program at USC. And uh, <coughs> negotiating where I'm going to end up this week, so then a few days out. Mm -hmm. My name is Thiago Puyo I was classmate of Arthur at the LLM program. Uh, I'm going back to Brazil in two weeks to join my family law firm there. So, yeah, two weeks in Brazil. Mm -hmm. My name is David Wilson. I was joining a student. One lecture when he substituted in. I see he was he was actually on the law review uh, editorial board when I was on law review staff back when we used to cut those articles in stone. <laughs> I'm a civil litigation uh, appellate lawyer, certified appellate specialist, and uh, partner in a firm here in downtown called Manning and Castle Road in Mears and Trester, and. Uh, the most interesting thing that's happened to me recently is I sang the national anthem for the Dodgers game. <laughs> that's my brand. <laughs> How do you remember? I can sing her. Give me the face. Yeah. 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 Uh, compared to the, all of you there, I think I'm the youngest right now. Probably, I just graduated from the uh, LM. Uh, Last year, oh, this year, I'm with uh, um, Tiago and uh, Ata, and I just graduated. And right now, I'm a legal assistant at Wilson Elser uh, the, at the next building. Yeah, and uh, I'm doing collection, and uh, I just, I'm waiting for the bar results. So I'm thinking, after I hear John's uh, speaking, I'm thinking about how to take control of my <laughs> career, you know, uh, if I don't want to do the rest of my life with. <laughs> and maybe do something after my father will come off. Yeah. I'm Hazel Kim. I'm a family law attorney. Um, well, we're a partner. We opened up our own firm about three years ago, Talbot and Kim. And we've been, you know, we're ESSE grads, and both of us about 10 years out in practice. We're here downtown, just at the Union Bank. I'm Jeanette Laba. I'm an employment lawyer. I work at Jackson Lewis down the street, uh, handling advice and counsel issues for employers. My name is Jeff Aaron Price. Uh, I practice in business immigration law, uh, helping companies in, in, and individuals uh, that need work permits, green cards, and citizenship. Um, and you'll be pleased to know that Law Review, is, as last I remember it, we were still you know, gathering books all over the uh, campus. <laughs> Hopefully that's now changed, but... Are you ready to rally? I am. <clears throat> I practice with him. I'm Brenda Rodmacher again, and I graduated in 96, and I'm pleased to be back actually at the law school. I uh, adjunct teach a mediation and negotiation class, and we were talking, I think you might have been one of my classes, so, <laughs> so it's really fun to do that. And in addition, uh, in my practice, I do construction, real estate, primarily in the litigation, uh, representing builders, developers, landowners, and the like, and then I do some mediation as well. I'm Billy Robbins, uh, also known as the Idea Doctor, uh, and I'm uh, with Conley Boat Lodge and Huts in downtown LA. The, uh, it's a woman Delaware based law firm. Uh, we're IP only, so I'm also an engineer, and I mix those two together and limit the practice to patent, trademark, and copyright law, uh, which the younger lawyers in this field a few years ago changed to a much more uh, 
uh, sexy thing called intellectual property law, <coughs> which is what we are. Uh, and so we work with uh, protecting our clients' inventions and innovations so they can create wealth by exploiting those things and hopefully become millionaires. Really mm -hmm. the idea. So, uh, my name is Kovanis Corgari, and uh, I had the crazy idea after I'm new graduate, which was in the biology field, to start an auto brokerage because I'm a car fanatic. So I started an auto brokerage and started USC Law. Um, I ran my business throughout law school and then through the first year after graduating. And then eventually, my clients came back to me with legal questions with so overnight, I became an auto fraud expert. So I litigated consumer cases against automotive dealerships. Everyone, you know, all the major dealerships, uh, it's my passion. It's all consumer, consumer cases. And uh, so I got auto defect case, uh, auto fraud, auto defects. So the fraud is very specialized. There's only a few attorneys in California who care to do it. Uh, and then I'm spinning into class actions more recently because as doing these cases, we come across some cases that are better off as class actions. Uh, and uh, like you said, as far as networking, uh, I think the main problem is most of the people go through the motion, but they don't do the actual networking. And if you actually take that one step to do the follow-up, then you set yourself apart. So even through, during this event, not everybody's going to contact everyone. But if you're that one person who sends that email out to everybody else or reaches out, you will stand up and then they'll remember you. So I think it, it takes very little to, to be that guy and to, to connect. And I've done a lot of networking myself. Uh, uh, just as far as an idea, uh, when I first started, I started doing lunches every month, just inviting all my classmates and all the trainers I knew. And, you know, uh, just pick a location, invite people to lunch, call up your friends, get everybody together, have people meet each other, exchange cards, and it will pay off in the long run. You know, so. And then I'm going to add one more thing. Since you guys said have business cards, I think we should all pass them out since we know each other. Okay, well, so if you leave your business card up there on the front table, we'll scan okay. them and email them out to them. Okay. So you don't have to have them. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. Thanks to our panelists. Business card holders. <laughs> and who, anybody have a birthday? Who has a birthday this month? I have a birthday today. Oh. 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 Oh.